Hello everybody, my name is Aceface. Today we're going to be doing some more T4 Abyss in my prized, prized Gila. In Jita actually. So T4s obviously don't require to use such an expensive ship, which is why I'm running them in Jita, because less likely that I'm going to get ganked. So, in other news, what happened is actually the cruiser prices are back to somewhat reasonable prices. They're still quite expensive, but... Um, this is just something I wanted to show you guys quickly because the, remember before the like a mauler went for like 30 mil you can see here okay it doesn't seem to have registered here but at one point they were going for 30 mil now it's back to like somewhat reasonable prices of 14 mil but it's still right you can see here uh, they were they used to be about 10 11 10 9 something around that price, uh, price range now they're 40 mil so they've almost gone up 50% it's still quite a bit, but at least it's not like 30 million. Now that's like you're going close to Navy cruiser prices. <laughs> Let's check some other cruisers if they are also normal prices. You know, more. Okay, so it's still up a bit, but it's not like that much. It's still somewhat reasonable, and that's quite expected because actually I was thinking of even myself just buying a few cruiser blueprints and producing some and selling them, but I didn't do it because I thought that. Like, by the time I've actually produced a decent amount of cruisers to sell, uh, probably a lot of other people would have done it anyway, and then the prices would have gone down. So it was good that I didn't do that, because I would have probably wasted a quite a bit of money. I mean, you can still, I think, earn a bit of profit with the with the prices right now, but it's not at all as much as you were able to before when the, each cruiser was going for like 30 mil plus. So, as per usual, I'm going to run some Raging Electricals, and we're going to go out of Undock and Jita and start running them. We can still see here, we're still getting some uh, events for the Proving Ground, actually the new 2v2 cruisers. Seems like every day you get a new uh, new event or reward for uh, entering them actually. And it seems to always be 5,000 skill points. I, I wonder if I wonder if this time it'll still be uh, 5,000 skill points. Let's check. Let's first just warp quickly because I always want to warp straight away. I don't want to have people scanning my ship. Oh, we got a gank over there. I marked this guy actually. Let's see now, this guy, he's an abyssal hunter right here. So I want to watch out for these guys. Alright, so now that we're out here, gonna then just go to the safe spot. It's not that, it's not that people, there's like a, a real much value in ganking me, it's just that I want to just, I just prefer to be left alone. I don't want people to just chill outside my, my abyssal trace. It's quite annoying when people do that. I don't want people to... <laughs> pay attention to me. This is a bit counterintuitive since I'm recording videos of these, but yeah, you know what I mean. So let's see now. If we can, uh, 5,000 skill points. Okay, so it seems to always be 5,000 skill points from these events right here. I wish it was a bit more, but you know, it's not really much you have to do, just enter the proving grounds. So let's activate this raging electrical and take off. Uh, I heard some of you guys in the comment section wanted me to explain more how to run the site safely and efficiently, efficiently. And I have been actually trying to do that, but I'll try even more to do that. Explain like what exactly I do to run the waves better. I've actually replaced one of my shield boost amplifiers for multi-spectrum shield hardener. You can see here, it's because I wanted to have a bit of extra buffer for the uh, for Charybdis Tyrannus rooms because he does a lot of burst damage. And it, it's hardly any, it's only a tiny bit less EHP per second, it's not much less. So you can see here we've got rogue drones, and I'm going to go for spark lances because they do EM damage, and I've got low EM resists, you can see here. So I want to go for the spark lances. Spark, you can you can uh, kind of remember it as like a lightning spark, so it's kind of like EM, you know, electro, like, a, you know, electromagnetic. Okay, so we've got tracking computer here, so we'll make them track a bit better, but it's all right. And the good thing here is they've got automata suppressors, so the drones are also going to take some more damage. And after that, I'm going to go for embalance because em the embalance do thermal, and thermal is the second uh, weakest resistance I have. But uh, it's still we've got still a quite a high resistance that it will not be a big issue. Rogue drones inherently do quite low damage, so it's not really a bigger issue anyway. Also important to have my light missile shoot at the same time, just so you save a bit of time here. Taking the extraction node, because that's where a lot of the ISK lies actually. Separating drones is also very important to do these efficiently, because you want to reduce drone flight time. Keep going to the extraction nodes. Mm -hmm. See, my drones are taking a bit of damage, but it's alright. 
Okay, go for the strike lance over here. I want to lock up these extraction nodes, use our heavy missile launcher because you can just pop them so we just straight away land on the extraction nodes. All right, let's go for this extraction node. Mm -hmm. Recall our drones. I've just woken up recently to my uh, morning and had my morning coffee and got ready and done some household chores. I was thinking, oh, let's just do a bit of Eve before we go out for the workout for today. Because I work out almost every single day, do a lot of strength training, resistance based training. So usually I like to get a little bit of stuff done in Eve before I go out. I do a lot of PI, so, or not a lot, but it's, it's one of the things I also do. Uh, I have these uh, planets, uh, if you can see here. Uh, I'm not using on this character currently, it's on a different, these, uh, these alternate characters I have on my account that I use the, the PI stuff on. So it's, 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 it was quite hard to set up the PI stuff, but I still don't really fully understand how it works. I just copied someone else's, uh, someone else's setup, but it's a very uh, simple setup to continuously use for, or like, a, or, a, or like a, AFK friendly, because I just have to reset the extractors and then I get, I get money from it. So it's very simple. So the rogue drone waves are one of the easier waves. So you should never have any problems with them. Let's go to the next conduit. Okay. Let's see what we're getting here. We're making good time with, oh, okay, okay, not the best time, three and uh, three minutes, 40 seconds, so that, I, it, T4s, I tend to hope to do them less than 10 minutes, that is what I can consider a good time. So we've got Mr. Charybdis right here, and uh, let's see now, we've got minus 70 EM resistance, so this is the harder variance of the Charybdis Tyrannus, because since we've got um, the EM at 70, what we want to go for is, since I've got very good cap stability, you want to go for the uh, Illuminators. The reason why we're gonna uh, not gonna go for dissipate is because I never usually have much issue with the. Uh, I never have really much issue with uh, newting, especially since we're in electricals. Consider since I have a really good capacitor, so we're taking out these illuminators is very important because if it, when we have illuminators on the case, then it makes the there's like a higher risk that the wrecking shots can land or at least it seems like that because i noticed that wrecking shots or like these big shots like penetrates etc they are a lot more present when uh, there you got a lot of illuminators on grid and we seem to have also a multi-body tracking pylon which is something we also have to take into consideration because multi-body tracking pylons further increase Kerbis's uh, cap tracking capabilities but you can see here i'm not really I'm not really like trying to keep up transversal on the career That's because I have a lot of tank, but if you are, let's say you have very, okay, now we're taking a lot of heat. So now I just want to overheat these modules a little bit, just so we can get uh, back to, you know, decent shield levels. Uh, stop overheating these now. We don't want to have too much heat, but um, Let's just uh, stop these for a second. Yeah, if you have like not as good tank as me, if you have not, have not good, as good tank as me, you're gonna want to... Oh, that was really good loot there, right? 50 mil right there. Yeah, if you have not, not have as good tank as me, you're gonna orbit Charybdis at 500 almost straight away. Then when you've killed off uh, all the cruisers and if you feel like you can face tank Charybdis by himself, then you can go for the extraction cases otherwise i would even recommend for you to just put an mtu and pull in the extraction cases while you're at 500 on Charybdis. because uh, since i have really good tank i'm able to go to the cases like i did now but most people or if you're using a cheaper ship you're probably not going to be able to do that that's why i always recommend you have that at least 500 ehp 400 ehp per second shields then you should be able to do just like i'm doing where you just can not have to worry too much about your tank only occasionally overheat if wrecking shots occur or some high damage shots you can see here now um actually just got the drone score on this uh, this guy because i like to just destroy all the cruisers first and then we can go for caribbis after that but you can see here if you see here i'm orbiting a 500 this is stuff you would want to do in the beginning if you um if you're like having a hard time tanking and you want to and you wouldn't either want to just burn directly towards Charybdis, you would want to kind of manually pilot, so manually pilot like this, with press Q, and then drag out the mouse like this, and you can go in like an arc. So like don't go, like say I spawn over there somewhere, you wouldn't want, you wouldn't want to go directly like this, you would want to go like from the side here, like this. Then I'll be able to like come here to, you know, like in an arc, so I keep my transverse up while simultaneously coming close to him. 
this is a this is important because uh, you know you don't want to get killed before you even get too close and that's also why uh, if uh, they were anchoring. I'm using MWD. I'll take out the anchorings first because anchorings will obviously keep me slow me down or almost keep me in place. Uh, I didn't take out the tanglings because tanglings I am usually able to burn if they're not that many. Usually they don't slow me down enough so that I can not get out of their web range. So they'll web me obviously. I'll go slower, but then after a few seconds I'll be I'll still be going pretty fast. That I can get out of their web range. There is crib this down there. It's very simple. Very simple. And uh, Kirby, this is one of the waves that take, tend to take a bit of a longer time, so we took about, I think, four minutes there. Double click on the gate, just to go over to it. You can always always recall your drones, your hockeys. I don't know what the default hockey is, but my hockey is set to Shift F to recall drones. Alright, let's go here, press this to just automatically go through the gate while we get to it. And this if there's something you have to be really careful for is if you've got these multi-body tracking piles near Kirby, then you have to take extra precaution because then he'll have a really good time to hit. Uh, big shots on you. Okay, this is also one of the tougher ways because it's the Triglavian ways. And there's a lot of dangerous e We've got anchorings and lots of starvings. So here, what I would actually go for, uh, but even though I've got good cap stability, I would still go for. Actually, I'll go for one of the anchorings so that we have the ability to run away from them. Uh, they're, they're also just one. There's just one, so there's we can't take them out. Although uh, directly after the anchorings, I'm gonna go for the uh, the MW the starving ones because the starving ones triglavians are known for having very strong neutralizing capabilities. Unlike the sleeper cruisers that we had in the last wave or uh, before the or the drifters, the drifters are neutral obviously, but they don't neutral at all anywhere as close to how much the uh, the, the triglavians do. The triglavians have really powerful nudes. and I even think they had stronger nudes before, but then they actually nerfed them because it was just crazily strong. They're actually, the first way I died, in fact, died in the abyss was actually to a neutering triglavian wave. What happened was, as I was in a T3 firestorm, and uh, the the T3 firestorm just was it was just uh, so it was not T4 like it was, so it was a bit easier than that was now it was just three starving red max and I was in a passive fit gila actually the passive and the passive fit gila obviously doesn't rely too much on cap but it does need some cap to be able to use the adaptive involves on it so um, it it they, they nuked so hard and I think this was even before that the starving red max were nerfed I think they got nerfed I'm not 100 percent sure if the red max were nerfed if you guys know if the starving red max were nerfed at one point please let me know in the comments but I think this was before the nerf because this was very recently. This was like at the time the abyss came out, like the first few weeks. And uh, obviously in firestorms, you don't have any good cap boosts. You don't have like any electricals. So I, my capacitor was still not that great. I'll take out the tanglings now so we can get speed up. Uh, yeah, and then uh, they just neutered me out. My hardness went off. They did, and Vedmax especially do a lot of damage. It's important to take out the Vedmax as soon as possible because they have a crit. Like if you think about how much EHP they have, or like take out how much damage DPS they have and divide it by how much EHP they have, I think that the that value is a lot higher for Vedmax than any of the other Triglavian ships because. Uh, t taking out Vedmax will significantly reduce the DPS. Well, Damavix will reduce the DPS, but they can. It's never. I can never. I never feel like they can like spool up to high enough numbers that it becomes much of an issue. The only times I have issues are with Vedmax. Even two Vedmax spooling up can actually do quite a bit of damage. Come close to Charybdis level, so you really do not want to let Vedmax keep spooling up on you. You want to take them out as soon as the dangerous E War is off the grid, like Starvings, because uh, and also another thing is that. I, something that you could do i don't do this that often nowadays but what i used to do was i would take out the anchorings uh, very like even if there were many anchorings on grid i'll take them out uh, straight away because because um if you take out the anchorings you can actually just mwd outside of the uh, triglavians disintegrate range and then they'll completely deactivate because they have quite a short range if you compare it to other ships like the Vedmax have a 20 kilometer range or something like that. So you're easily able to kite them. But the thing is, the problem is that it has happened a few times. If I focus too much on the tangling or anchorings first, they were actually able to do me so much. They would actually become at the dangerous capacitor levels. And that is quite scary when you don't have enough capacitor because obviously you can't fight back then. So usually I would take out the, now I'll 
just take out if there's just maybe a lone anchoring i'll take that out being able to run away if i am uh, otherwise i'll just focus mainly on the starvings first because you still really do not want to mess with underestimate the trigger larvians neutralizing capabilities it's one of the one of the best uh, neutralizing capabilities NPCs in the game, actually. Uh, there is this officer. I've seen a video on YouTube of some guy fighting an officer spawn uh, blood raider ship. It's like a, I think it looks like a paladin, you know, the marauder, but in blood raider colors. That's what the NPC looks like. Is an officer. I think it's called Draklir Ferlonen or something like that. And that uh, officer, she is actually of really strong neutralizing capabilities i've seen this guy on youtube he fought it in a rat snake that used zero capacitor so he was fully passive and had um absolutely nothing that used a capacitor the missiles don't use capacitor the drones don't use capacitor didn't have any shield modules or even passive ones that use capacitor this gank is just chilling out here this scrub right here i want to dock quickly because even though we've not got a gankable ship we don't want him to you know, maybe he's thinking that, oh, you know, oh, I know this guy from before. Maybe he's probably looked on ZK or something that, oh, I've been previously in an expensive ship. So maybe he'll just assume automatically that I'm in a bit expensive ship and maybe he'll, you know, just decide to gank me like that without even scanning my ship to what I'm using. So we put all our items in our, we have got the abyssal loot filter here. And I go in my item hanger and I can just sell them here. And actually, I got this Abyssal Loot filled from some guy in Abyssal Luckers. Oh, what the heck is this crap? Look here. We had 86 million and we only got 55 million. That's a real ripoff right there. I think it's this large cap battery actually that has gone down a lot in price. Yeah, like look at that. How much is it actually worth? 40 million. Yeah. Oh, that's a lot. Let's see now. Is there anything else that's gone down a lot? Hmm, doesn't seem like much else has gone down. I guess survey data always is on the decline. It's quite annoying. There we go, 55 mil. All right, and now we have the one bill risk mark, guys. But that it doesn't still mean that it's making activities over. There's always more stuff you can get. I'm thinking of soon maybe buying a, a worm, like I just told you before. This one here, I want to try this out in T2, see if this works good. Because the thing is, the thing I really like about this ship is that we're able to have relatively high DPS, so 300, and we're also able to do it without having to think about transversal the retribution fit i had before remember i did retribution in the abyss Brilliant. the good thing about this is that it has very good range and also dps but i mean obviously it's not as good as the worm but the thing is you have to always consider transversal so you have to you don't want to like perfectly orbit people because if you orbit too much then it'll, you actually miss a lot. But the worm, on the other hand, doesn't have to think about that due to how missiles and drones work. So that's something I really want to hopefully become pretty good at. So that's it for this T4 run, guys. Hope you enjoyed. And if you did, please leak a, leave a like and subscribe. And that's it for the cruiser prices going back to normal prices. And so now we're finally at one bill isk. I'll catch you later, guys.